after a week of evidence, both the Crown and Defence have now closed their cases. It's been four days of emotion and I'm sure many of those involved in the case are looking forward to its conclusion. Ian McGrail told the court that at the time of his arrest for sexual assault, he was already under pressure due to his earlier arrest on suspicion of conspiracy to cause a data breach at the inquiry solicitors. He was later released from arrest and today told the court it was bizarre as it was he who'd uncovered the leak himself and informed the RGP. He said he believes there is a conspiracy with a view to discrediting him and bringing down his reputation before and during the inquiry and that this allegation is part of that. He said before he even called the inquiry he'd been warned of this and had written down his concerns, depositing them with his lawyers as well as people of high repute in Gibraltar and abroad in case anything untoward happened to him. With his voice breaking with emotion, Mr McGrail told the court, I am not a criminal. Speaking about the alleged sexual assault, he said police officers are trained to take notes of significant events and questioned why the complainant, herself a police officer, would have made no contemporaneous notes of the incident. He said this is because it never happened. Mr McGrail said the complainant's evidence is that the incident happened a mere 10 metres from the command suite, which has a glass door that the secretary could look through at all times. He referred to the complainant's evidence that he grabbed her bottom for a full 10 seconds. He said in this context, 10 seconds is a very long time. He claimed her evidence does not stack up. He said 20 to 25 personnel worked there during working hours and to suggest he might have risked 36 years of hard work in that way just doesn't make sense. The complainant has not been able to specify a date for the alleged assault, with the charge spanning a whole year. Mr McGrail said in his experience this was unusual for a one-off incident. He also said the lack of date denied him the chance of an alibi. He said the complainant is not reliable. And he rejects what she said entirely. Also for the defence, three people were called to give evidence in relation to the police federation and links to the inquiry. First up, Michael Crome, who said he was in court in his capacity as a liaison officer for the government for the Police Federation. He went over the letter of assurance given to the complainant and confirmed she would have remained on the same salary she had at the RGP if she was transferred. He said he met the woman at the Federation offices. She had given another location for this meeting. Retired chairman of the Federation, Maurice Morello, was the last witness to give evidence. He told the court transfers out of the police to another role were only made when an officer's position becomes untenable. Mr Morello said he was not aware that whistleblowing protections had ever been needed until the inquiry. When asked if the Federation had actively sought out officers to give statements to the inquiry, he said absolutely not. The Crown and defence cases have now concluded. Closing arguments are expected tomorrow.